Carl Edwards could come back to NASCAR, and Kyle Larson took out all of his frustrations on the high limit sprint car field. <laughs> Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Carl Edwards was in the news once again. He had his media availability after his NASCAR Hall of Fame induction was announced two weeks ago this past week, and he talked about a number of things. I mean, after 12 and a half seasons as a NASCAR Cup Series driver, 28 wins, nearly taking Matt Kenseth's head off at Martinsville, a devastating 2016 championship loss that saw him walk away from the sport afterwards, getting flipped over for, by Brad Keselowski, flipping over Brad Keselowski. Hey, yep. Carl has a lot of things to talk about. One thing that he made certain was that he did not leave the sport because of what happened at the end of that championship race in 2016. You know, where NASCAR throws a late race questionable caution. He gets turned off the nose of Joey Logano trying to block, smashes into the inside wall, then smashes into the outside wall, walks away from the sport afterwards, uh, pretty close to the 2017 Daytona 500, and kind of left everybody wondering. He said it wasn't because of that. He has his own reasons. That's totally fine. We'll respect uh, his privacy as he continues to not want to talk about that, which is more than okay. But he is, you know, the curious case of Carl Edwards. He's the mystery out here. Everybody wants to know kind of about Carl. Is he going to come back? He said he has no intentions of ever racing in the NASCAR Cup Series again. He says that he has done sim work before. He, of course, has been to Trackhouse. Justin Marks, when he started Trackhouse, took a flight to Missouri to see if he could convince Carl to come back. He could not. Uh, but, you know, you have to try, at least. Carl did say, however, that he is more open than ever to doing television work. Of course, last year when NASCAR honored the 75 greatest drivers at Darlington, Carl hopped up into the booth with Fox and Mike Joy and Clint Boyer and called some racing from up there. And he was phenomenal. Carl would be a great television guy. Does he want to do 14 races like what um, what Fox has or a larger portion of the schedule like what NBC has? Or does he want to maybe stick with maybe the five that Prime or TNT have a piece? I think that's probably maybe where he fits into the mold if he wanted to do something. But if you're a TV executive and a producer, I feel like you have to at least reach out and make a call to Carl Edwards and see you know, if you can kind of get a deal together. Because Carl is a guy, granted, has never driven the Gen 7 car in real life. Of course, I think he probably has on a sim before. But he's a personable, personable guy. He can talk um, with anybody about anything. And he's laid back. I think that's kind of what the booth needs at this point. He isn't very southern sticky in the Clint Boyer, Jeff Burton kind of way. Uh, he has a pleasant voice. It doesn't sound... <sighs> No offense to people with the Southern accent, but he sounds different than the other people that are in the booth. And I think that's a good thing because it helps, you know, connect to people outside of the Southeast, which again, not saying it's a bad thing. I just think it's nice to have a diversity of accents in the booth, essentially. That's why I'm pumped to see Lee Diffie up there. But for Carl, it would be cool to see him come back. Every time I say Carl, I just think of Rick from Walking Dead yelling, Carl! Carl! It's, it's, a, it's tough. But I digress. Carl coming back would be good for the sport. I think he's been out long enough now that maybe he wants to come back and do you know a few more things here and there. But it is cool to see him doing well and kind of you know getting a little bit of retrospective on his career a little bit. And it's cool knowing that he maybe wants to come back. So Carl Edwards is not going to drive anymore, but we could see him up in the television booth, which is still good to see him involved with the sport. Moving on to the hottest topic of the week, Kyle Larson, still without a waiver. Uh, everybody else that's ever been granted a waiver has been given it the same day or the day after. Car Kyle Larson is now approaching three days, at least, after where they've you know asked for a waiver. And it doesn't seem like he's going to get it before Sunday's race at Gateway. But, of course, he had a very frustrating Sunday last week. The Indianapolis 500 got pushed four hours late. So, of course, he ran that race, shows up to Charlotte halfway through the Coke 600, isn't able to get in the car because NASCAR red flags the race for rain and then ultimately calls it. Chris Rebell, your winner there. And Larson was left really frustrated, put out a social post on Monday saying that he feels like he let everybody down, this and that. Well, he went to the, he went to the high limit race at Lawrenceburg Speedway on Friday night in Indiana. I was there in attendance, got a pork tenderloin, a proper pork tenderloin, unlike that Ex poor excuse that they serve at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway now for a pork tenderloin. How do we get on pork tenderloins talking about Kyle Larson? Whatever. It's Indiana. That's what, It's a delicacy. You go to Indiana, you have to get a pork tenderloin. Either way, Kyle Larson showed up to run the high banks at Lawrenceburg because he loves the racetrack, and he took out all of his frustrations on that high limit field. Qualifies, 
doesn't get the pole, qualifies, I believe, fifth, ends up finishing third in the dash, and then in the feature, took him eight laps to get around Rico Abreu. Once he finally clears Rico, he drove away from the field. At one point, he was nearly half a lap ahead of second place Rico, and then ends up winning the race by just around three-tenths of a second, got caught up in traffic there at the end, but absolutely put a butt whooping on the entire high limit field. And it really felt like he was just, and it really felt like he was just flushing out all of his frustrations on Friday night. And when Kyle Larson is in peak Kyle Larson form, the dominant run that we saw on Saturday or on Friday night, leading 22 of the 30 laps is exactly what you expect. He and that car were completely hooked up with that racetrack and nobody was rolling the top better than him. He absolutely dashed away from the field and it wasn't it wasn't a race once he took the lead it was over like the entire crowd erupted kyle larson brings everybody to the racetrack kyle larson is the you know the new aj Foyt. he's the the next great american racer it just is what it is at this point the amount of people i saw there and kyle larson dirt merch kyle larson indycar merch kyle larson nascar merch kyle larson late model merch the guy is everywhere and everybody's there to see Kyle Larson because like I said he's one of those last guys that is racing and literally anything he can I mean in the course of what six days he drove a cup car at Charlotte in practice and qualifying he raced the Indianapolis 500 and then he hops into a dirt car on Friday night at Lawrenceburg and he was competitive in all three he also did a tire test for the NASCAR Cup Series on Tuesday night or Tuesday day rather uh, at Iowa so the guy is anywhere and everywhere racing whatever he can at this point and it's cool to see it is absolutely incredible to see a guy of that talent out there doing what he does um and for everybody else you're just kind of racing for second on Friday night Rico tried to slide job him on the restart after James McFadden wrecked didn't get it done but for Kyle Larson he has very much cemented himself as the best driver in the world with the most diverse schedule in the world currently as it goes. You can throw out Max, you can throw out Pelot, you can throw out anybody else. Nobody is doing what Kyle Larson is doing from a diverse schedule standpoint and being competitive in any car that he gets in right now. So let me know in the comments what you think about Carl coming back, maybe doing the TV booth, and Kyle Larson getting his frustrations out from last weekend on the poor high limit field. Uh, we'll see if he gets a waiver, but for now... It's just kind of sitting around in purgatory.